Here are nine critters that straight up take over wherever they go. Number one, the rats. Rats are one of those critters that'll have you feel in some type of way. Some folks straight up can't deal with their nastiness, while others think they're all cute and cuddly. Fact is, these little homies are wicked smart, but they also know how to take over, if you know what I mean. These guys are the real OG predators. They go hard and won't stop till they've wiped out anything in their path to feed their cravings. And let me tell you, that shit's gonna wreak havoc. Don't be thinking humans are the only ones who can mess up a whole species. That's straight up bullshit. Rats, for example, have been single-handedly killing off 50% of the seabirds and reptiles on a bunch of islands they've invaded. Those little demons gobble up their eggs like ravenous wolves on a feeding frenzy, man. It's some sociopathic behavior right there. A rat can chow down on 8 to 10% of its own weight every damn day. They'll go to town on anything from veggies to grains to small critters, you name it. These little dudes consume around 50 grams of grub each and every day. That's wild, man. And I know what you're thinking, 50 grams ain't nothing. But when you're talking about thousands of these little beasts with insatiable appetites devouring everything in sight, it adds up. Want to see how whack that is? Check this out. So get this. Back in January 2015, a squad of scientists were straight up pissed that rats had wrecked 95% of the bird gang on South Georgia Island just off the coast of Argentina and Antarctica by munching on their eggs and little ones. They ended up calling in a global team of rat fighters who airdropped over 100 tons of rat scrambler straight into these pests rodent faces. And guess what? It actually worked, man. Haven't seen a single rat since. And let's not forget, these dudes were originally brought to the island by English ships way back in the 18th century. Not only are rats major foodies, they also know that to dominate a turf, they gotta go all out with a Blitzkrieg-style attack. And get this, a single female rat can have up to 12 litters per year with 10 baby rats each time. That's like 120 baby rats a year. So over her lifetime, one rat can pop out anywhere from 1,000 to 20 2,500 little demon spawns. Yeah, that's a whole lot of hungry little homies to take care of. Damn. Number two, the Java Mongoose. This little cutie almost makes you forget it's got a body count. But don't let the fur fool you. This thing's a straight up savage when it comes to killing. This Javanese mongoose is from eastern Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, northern India, and southeast Asia, and it's been keeping a low profile for a minute. At first, the locals were all about it. This thing was taking out snakes, rats, and other pesky vermin. So when some foreigners came through and suggested taking it back, Back home to deal with their own pest problems, everybody was like, yeah, why not? Big mistake, man. Down in Guadalupe, they brought these mongooses in just to wipe out the rats. Problem is, rats come out at night, and mongooses are daytime creatures. You see where this is going, right? To make matters even worse, these rats and mongooses weren't even running into each other. But the mongooses were going crazy for snakes, which were the main predator keeping the rat population in check. And let me tell you, these West Indian snakes were not ready for the wave of mongooses that came crashing down on them, ready to check down without a second thought. Just to set the record straight, they only brought a few female mongooses back for a test run. But turns out all these ladies were pregos, so they had a bunch of babies that straight up annihilated the snakes. Problem is, those mongooses are also snacking on bird eggs, so in some parts of the island, the bird population is on the brink of extinction. These mongooses even wiped out the amoeba cinera lizard from the island, and if the scientists hadn't intervened, they would have killed off Leophis Yulia and Alsophis antilensis, two snake species. What a freaking mess, man. Man. So basically, wherever they brought this Javanese mongoose to, they completely wrecked the birds, reptiles, and small mammals populations. And to make things even worse, they started munching on chickens, ducks, and other poultry like it's no big deal. Because these mongoose are used to battling super poisonous snakes, so pecking on some defenseless chickens is like a walk in the park for them. This mongoose is a straight up invasive demon, man. It's so bad that it's illegal to import, breed, or transport them anywhere. That's how much of a bastard they are. Number three, buffalo toad. Just peeping it, you know this toad be up to some shady biz. This thing may sound small at 13 centimeters and 120 grams, but it's actually one of the wildest threats on the whole damn planet. The buffalo toad's already sweating a poison that'll make you want to scratch your skin right off because it's so damn itchy. This bulldozer ain't got nothing on its mind except chowing down, and it'll scarf down anything that fits in its big ass mouth. Bugs, worms, even some fancy birds if it's feeling extra hungry. Not only does this thing wipe out species left and right, it's from South America, but you can find it all the way in Taiwan and Oz, but it's even more savage than f rats when it comes to reproduction. From April to May, buffalo toad couples get freaky, and the female can lay up to a whopping 30,000 eggs. That's 30,000 future bloodsuckers hungry AF and ready to wreck anything in their path as soon as they hatch. They go and clean house on the surface of this planet, no doubt. And get this, not only does it straight up kill whole species, but it even messes with pollinating bugs and makes it harder for plants to reproduce. All because of this mother 
asshole. Down in Australia, ain't no predators brave enough to take a bite out of these four-legged shits. Originally, these toads got brought to the island to munch on beetles messing with the farmers, but they quickly realized they ain't feeling those beetles and decided to start wrecking other helpless species instead. So now, not only are the farmers still dealing with a beetle problem, but the whole damn continent's been taken over by millions of these nasty buffalo toads. These damn toads were recently spotted in Taiwan and the whole damn population freaked out at the thought of getting overrun. So they banded together and caught 200 of them. But let's be real, it's already too late. With each female dropping thousands of eggs every year, they ain't got a chance. Number four, the common carp. If you're trying to find a squad of greedy beasts that'll chow down on anything in their path, let me introduce you to the common carp. Let me tell you about this fish called the common carp. On one hand, it's all over restaurant menus and people love eating it. But on the other hand, it's a real slimy bastard that'll totally wreck marine ecosystems. In France, they're pumping out mad tons of carp every year, especially in Salon, Limousine, Brenet, and Dums. We're talking like 4,000 to 5,000 tons, son. The carp may look dumb, but it's a real bully. It can stand any competition and will straight up massacre anything in its way. No remorse. Toss a carp in a spot and it'll chow down on all the small critters, other fish, and even the essential plants in our lakes. Next thing you know, the once clear water is now all muddy and gross. That sucks. These carps be wrecking up the joint, killing all the critters and plants in the rivers and lakes they infest. They're pushing these ecosystems to the brink of death, and like all invader predators, these common carps breed like rabbits. A female can pop out hundreds of thousands of eggs that'll be ready to hatch in only five days. That's a whole army of horny hooligans just waiting to take down nature. They are straight up troublemakers in Europe, America, and Asia, wreaking havoc on all living beings associated with their river homes. But they sure do taste good on a plate. Number five, the Asian Hornet. The Asian Hornet is straight up gangsta, a mafioso, a real life bandit. They roll deep and go after the weak and defenseless. And this Hornet bastard thinks we're weak, because as soon as it spots a human, even from a distance, the Hornet gangsters come after you, stinging you all over to make you cry and wish you'd never been born. And for those unlucky few who are allergic to their venom, better start praying to their gods, because you might be joining them real soon. And what does flying pests love to do besides wreaking havoc on us? Wipe out bees. And that's just unacceptable, damn it. Let me tell you straight up, bees are the real VIPs of the natural world. This Asian hornet don't give a shit about bees. They're straight up savage and wait at the hive entrance to snatch up worker bees to chow down on. When they roll up, pollination drops, crops suffer, and everything goes haywire. This f***ing predator can take out hundreds of bees in just a few hours, one by one like it's no big deal, and then just chill and laugh at the genocide. The Asian bees got their game together when it comes to dealing with these winged bastards. They know how to deal with them by grabbing their asses and heating them to death by going kamikaze on them. But our European bees are not ready for this and get sent to the cemetery every damn day by these dumb predators. It's crystal clear that only us humans can save them. After nearly 20 years of Asian hornet invasion, we're finally starting to get some solutions. But for now, it's all out war. As soon as a nest is found, it's gotta be taken down. Pronto. Big shout out to dope YouTube channel Etienne LGF. It's an absolute gem. Number six, the muskrat. The muskrat is like a mini beaver, but instead of being a team player, it's a straight up looter who takes everything for itself. So these morons thought it was a good idea to import the muskrat from North America for their fur. But then when the market collapsed, they had a shit ton of these little bastards to deal with. So they did the most logical thing and let them loose into the wild. I mean, what could go wrong, right? The muskrat is some extraterrestrial predator. It ain't really trying to attack no humans or other animals. Well, not any more than it needs to. Him, he's all about wrecking dams, ditch banks, and other water stuff. With his tiny teeth and scratchy paws, he can move a whole lot of dirt each year, like a whole cubic meters worth. And when there's a bunch of them going at it, you get trees ripped up, busted dikes, totally trashed banks, and even dams falling apart. In Europe, ain't no big predators like alligators in Florida, so we gotta do some real work to kick these damn creatures out. But it's a total waste, because there's a shit ton of them, and they keep on making babies like nobody's business. Number seven, the Burmese python. Would this list even be legit without at least one snake? When it's hot and muggy, you know the bugs are gonna be hella gross. And in the Florida Everglades, you got this huge badass critter called the Burmese python. This snake is one of the top six biggest snakes in the world, and the largest one ever caught was almost six meters long and weighed almost 100 kg. It's the boss of its hood and don't share with nobody. But here's the thing, it ain't even from around here. It was brought over to the US in the 80s and since then, it's been ruling as a total 
dictator miles away from its native Southeast Asia. Damn, these birds, American pumas, and coyotes in the hood are getting straight up wrecked by this psycho python. They're all in danger of straight up disappearing. This python is all about that swim and climb life and ain't no one safe. It's straight up swallowing mammals like raccoons, squirrels, and rabbits whole and choking out alligators with a death grip. And get this, it's even taking out young gators so they can't grow up and be competition later on. A new study just dropped and apparently these Burmese pythons are offing 77% of Florida's marsh rabbits. These snakes are straight up ruthless killers, no lie. But hold up, there's more. This massive snake has another preferred victim, pets. Like if someone's cat or dog goes missing in Florida, chances are it got eaten up by one of these big Burmese pythons. Straight up gruesome. Right now there's like 20,000 to 30,000 of these Burmese pythons chilling in Florida and it ain't looking good. See, these females are popping out 25 to 30 eggs at a time and like 90% of them are hatching, which means the killing spree is just gonna keep on going. No end in sight. To try and fix this mess, the US is hiring peeps to catch and put down these big nasty snakes. And get this, Florida's so desperate they're actually considering letting people eat these giant eels. Like, damn, they must be running out of options. So how are you feeling about some Burmese python steak with a side of fries and mayo? Sounds good or what? Number eight, the wild boar. These boars and wild pigs are straight up demons. They'll come in, wreck your whole spot, and even if you glance at them the wrong way, they'll tear you apart, no joke. Out in the real world, a boar is a power monster that can weigh up to 100 kilos and measure up to 1.5 meters long. And with its tough brown coat, when it hits the plains, you can't miss it. And that ain't even the half of it. Wild boars can hook up with domestic pigs and the offspring look like straight up crazy pigs. Like we talking schizo level insanity. There was this one pig, right? They called Hogzilla. Some dude in the US caught it back in 2004 and everybody thought it was fake news. But then for a National Geographic doc, some scientists ran some DNA tests and confirmed that it was, in fact, a real hybrid pig. This thing was a straight up beast, weighing in at 360 kilos and measuring between 2 and 2.6 meters long. Okay. A true monster, no doubt. Bro, a regular boar can already mess you up, so just imagine something three times heavier. That joint is straight up violent, and the hybrids ain't even done yet. Check this out. They be reproducing all on their own. Like in Sweden, wild boars don't even trip when it comes to busting down electric fences just to hook up with domestic pigs. Farmers end up with litters of hybrids that are sometimes straight up aggressive or just straight up weird. Some of these little dudes even be jumping around when they're stressed. Crazy, right? The wild boar all the way from Europe lands in the US with its bro, the wild pig. And they straight up terrorize farmers and folks out for a stroll. No provocation needed, especially if they got youngins in tow. They're dumb as bricks, so what do you expect? Female wild boars can start making babies at just six months old. And every 12 to 15 months, they pop out eight to 12 crazy ass piglets. So in a single year, the boar numbers can triple. That's some serious reproduction, man. You smelling trouble coming or what? These beasts have a habit of rooting around in the dirt to chow down on roots, tubers, and other goodies. Of course, they love to hit up well-cultivated fields and any grub meant for livestock. And since they're such piglets, they'll scarf down everything in sight, leaving nothing for the other critters. Hell yeah. And these beasts even go after people's pets. If your cat or dog's wandering around like they own the place, they might end up as the boar's dinner, whether they're street smart or out with their bay. Like, you think that's bad? A wild boar can haul around like 40 freaking parasites and pass on more than 30 diseases. Sheesh. Ain't that a good neighbor, huh? Number nine, the raccoon dog. Get out of the way, I'm starving, is the go-to line of the raccoon dog who looks like a blend of all carnivorous pests with its badger face, raccoon coat, and sturdy build. This little critter weighs around six to seven kg and is from East Asia, including China, Vietnam, Japan, and Korea. How did that thing even end up in the middle of Europe? Well, some merchants decided to bring it over from Asia to trade its sweet fur. But when the market took a dive, well, you know the next. The raccoon dog, now running wild, is creating a pathway straight to heaven by devouring every rodent, bug, frog, fish, snake, and snail in sight. When the raccoon dog spots chickens or other poultries at someone's place, what does he do? He goes yum yum. At night, this little thief sneaks into plantations and jacks a couple of melons, some corn, or vine seeds. Gotta get that midnight snack, you know? Some of these critters can climb, swim, and dig, so there's no point in hiding because everything gets eaten. Birds make a nest and lay their eggs? No problem, this guy will go and chow down on the eggs and munch on the parents, leaving nothing behind. The raccoon dog doesn't waste food because he eats everything. Throw in the fact that they're always hungry and you'll see why they're gobbling up everything in sight. From helpless creatures to other predators' meals. They're like a one animal apocalypse, leaving nothing for the rest of the pack. But nature fights back hard. Like wolves in Russia go ham on those raccoon dogs. No mercy, straight up slaughter. And even red foxes go after the babies and sometimes bite the adults to death. That's how much they hate them. In your
Later up, when these raccoon dogs are stupid enough to enter the burrows of other foxes and badgers, they get killed directly. European lynxes don't do it often, but if they're feeling peckish, they'll have them for lunch. Even the sky gets in on the action with its claws, because the golden eagle, bald eagle, and Eurasian eagle owl also kill and chow down on raccoon dogs. It's a crazy battle going on in Europe and even on British turf, because some dumbasses are bringing back raccoon dogs as pets, and when they escape, they mess up the whole ecosystem with their endless hunger. When it comes to humans, they're allowed to hunt and trap these raccoon dogs. That's just how much damage they cause. Hit up the latest vid if you haven't already.